Wow. We can go out onto the pier. Let's do it. Welcome back to another video. And today we are heading out for a kind of chill ride. We're just gonna go out to uh, China Camp, which is a state park and a really interesting historic place. But nothing too crazy today, nothing kind of hidden or lesser known. This is a pretty well-known spot and I'm trying to get there early so I can beat the crowds. Now, I don't know if you've noticed on the GoPro, but I have some mitts over my handlebars. <laughs> I got these as a kind of cheap way to fend off the cold in the mornings on my hands. This is kind of the same thing they use in Tibet. When I was in, in Tibet, there's a lot of people on little motorcycles like this one. And they have these big mitts over the handlebars to keep the cold off. Woo! Squirrel. <laughs> Y'all see that squirrel try to kill itself? in speed just because it's slightly uphill. <laughs> Jesus. Oh wow. China camp right here. Oh that was short. I mean I think it's still wow look at the view. I think it's still a little ways. Oh look at that nice view. Oh. Wow. Already there. Okay, here we are at China Camp State Park. I'm gonna go down to the village, walk around a little bit, get some nice shots, hopefully of a uh, really interesting historic fishing village here. In 1869, a large portion of land out here was bought by the McNear brothers, who were landowners and businessmen. They set up a dairy ranch that covered more than 2,500 acres, including this five mile strip along the San Pablo Bay. Chinese immigrants worked on the McNear Ranch and supplemented their income by setting up camps along the water and fishing for shrimp. There were dozens of fishing camps like China Camp throughout the area, but this is the only preserved historic site. Some shrimp was sold to restaurants, but the majority was dried and exported to China. About 3 million pounds of shrimp were harvested from the San Pablo Bay every year in the late 1800s and into the 1900s. In the 1880s, China Camp had about 500 residents. There were small streets, general stores, a marine supply store, a barber shop, shrimp drying and grinding sheds, and houses. The population grew at that time in part because of the racism against Chinese people throughout California. White people made scapegoats of Chinese immigrants during a recession, and the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 was passed, severely limiting immigration from China. It was the first time a specific nationality was prohibited from immigrating to the U.S. Chinese immigrants came to China Camp to live more freely, away from the racism in many other parts of Marin and the Bay Area. But more racist laws were passed and made life at China Camp more difficult. In 1905, the export of shrimp was banned, which crippled the economy of China Camp. In 1911, the bag nets used by Chinese immigrants were also banned. Because of these laws, people couldn't survive at China Camp anymore, and eventually many residents left. In 1955, China Camp served as a location for the John Wayne and Lauren Bacall film Blood Alley. I haven't seen the movie, but I know it's an extremely racist film that was born out of Cold War hysteria. But it is part of this place's history, since part of it was filmed here. 
By the 1960s, a developer named Chin Ho owned most of the San Pedro Peninsula out here. In 1976, the California State Park Foundation bought most of this area. The 36-acre China campsite was donated by Chin Ho, who wanted it to be preserved as a memorial to Chinese American history. The park was established in 1977. But because of the recession in 2008, hundreds of state parks were impacted by budget cuts. And in 2011, then-Governor Jerry Brown proposed closing 70 parks, including China Camp. But locals came together and fundraised. The nonprofit Friends of China Camp was created and raised enough money to take over operations of the park. Wow. You can go out onto the pier. Let's do it. Wow, what an interesting place. I honestly did not expect it to be this interesting, um, but it's so well preserved. It's really cool. I love to see um, old places like this. Of course, uh, you know, like a lot of the rest of this country and California, this place is kind of interw intertwined with a really sad history. Um, but nevertheless, really interesting to see and, and to be able to walk through it, it really feels like you're in another time. Well, that really was a cool place to check out. Like I said, it's not some kind of hidden gem. It's pretty well known, popular spot. But I've never been there my whole life, I don't think. So it was really interesting to see. I love historical places like that. So I'm going to head back to town and I'm actually going to go check out a little spot that seems really cool. Uh, back in Mill Valley, my hometown, there is a motorcycle and car garage and kind of like social club, I guess. It must be fairly new. I don't know when they started or opened because I've never heard of anything like this in my town. So I'm really interested. Um, to go check it out. They said absolutely come by and check out the space. So this is Route Mill Valley, a motorcycle and car club. Really cool spot. I'm gonna take a look inside. Check this out. So it's a real community of people. It's like. a real community, yeah. We have a forum online that people can ask questions and yeah. post things on. Um, but otherwise, it's just a bunch of good people in a cool space. Yeah, it's really nice. What a great place. I'm honestly so excited about that place uh, because it's such a great idea. We don't have anything like that around here. I don't you know, have any sort of motorcycle community around here so that is really a great idea i'm very excited about it so maybe we'll see more and meet some people from the uh root community but anyway what a fun day that was cool thank you so much for watching i know it was kind of a shorter simpler video today but there's plenty more to come a lot of cool videos planned so yeah thanks for watching